to find out, or Aaron O'Toole, Ontario Conservative MP. He's in studio with me now. Matthew Kelway, the NDP's urban affairs critic and former defense uh, procurement critic. He's in Toronto. And Joyce Murray, the Liberal National Defense critic, is in Vancouver. Um, Mr. O'Toole, thanks for being here. The report uh, commissioned by Public Works under Ronna Ambrose uh, echoes what the Auditor General's report said in 2010 that this thing has gone badly wrong, but it points the problem mostly at the government's own structure. What's the government's response? Well, Evan, I uh, appreciate the opportunity to appear. Uh, I haven't obviously seen the report, as you know, uh, but it's clear from what you said that there were problems from the outset. And uh, the government gets reports and studies and briefing notes on a variety of things, particularly large procurement projects like this. And I can't comment without having seen it. But your introduction talks about problems from the outset. And I agree with Minister McKay's comments that you just showed. This is the worst procurement uh, in history. And it was started and, and fumbled by the Liberals. And hey. back, right back to the outset of the project, as you mentioned, it was Scott Bryson, Ms. Murray's colleague, who announced the project. Um, and our government has been committed to try and get the men and women the equipment they need. And, and but for six years, but this has been going on six years. It's true this goes on for two governments, and uh, the Auditor General's report blames both governments on this. But now they're six years into this. In 2010, when the Auditor General report came out, your government was in power, still is. Now there's another report um, that says the fundamental problems exist, and the government has to get a governance structure on board in order to get these choppers flying. They say they could be great choppers. They say, quote, unsurpassed in, world, in the world today in terms of capability. What has the government done to make sure these things fly and there's value for money? If, the, if your own report says you haven't done enough. We've been firm with Sikorsky on delays. And so there's contractual penalties that have accrued already on this project. But the last thing our government wants to do is to, to rush and make a decision that wouldn't give our men and women the best equipment they need. So but we have a contract. Sure, just to be fair, I know there's delays for Sikorsky. And, the, and by the way, Sikorsky doesn't... The, the Auditor General's report blames Sikorsky as well. But this report says it's not the Sikorsky problem. It's the governance structure. So it's not about enforcing penalties. It's about the government changing its governance structure to make sure this process, which is a developmental process, they say, runs well. Has the government changed the process to make this thing work? The process has focused on statement of requirements. So an aircraft had to meet certain capabilities. <coughs> from a flight standpoint, from working with the Navy, range, search and rescue, all of these things. We're waiting for Sikorsky to deliver the contract, uh, the helicopter under the contract, meeting those requirements, those statement of requirements. Right. You know they haven't met them yet, and that's why the, f the four aircraft that are in Nova Scotia, uh, I know they're out there, it's my old military base, I'm a ex-seeking guy, Nobody wants to see new aircraft more than me, but we want to make sure that they meet those requirements but, so that they but can so be operated. You, you, you put your finger on the nub of this. This report's whole point is if it's an off the shelf procurement, you wait till all the statement of requirements are done to fly them. The report is saying, I'll read it, an incremental development approach is the preferred approach to achieving full capability rather than the single step approach. Treat it as a developmental approach. In other words, don't wait till it's perfectly done. It's so close to being done, it already will fly. Get these things out there, test it, and use the incremental development approach. Er your own report is urging the government to change that attitude. Will the government change? Some things like software development for the anti-submarine warfare mission, those things can incrementally be developed to allow the crews to develop the ways to use the aircraft. But there are hard and fast requirements that are pretty much uh, critical portions of the contract that need to be met and we're expecting Sikorsky to meet those requirements before we accept the, the, the aircraft. Certain things on how it's used and developing operational uh, ways of acting with it, that can be incrementally brought in by, by the Canadian forces. What we want to make sure is the handover of the aircraft is giving the men and women what they okay. need. Okay. Well, I, I, let me get Matthew Kelway in here. According to this report, it said the government and Sikorsky are misaligned in the most fundamental way. Critical aspects of the program in terms of common goals, common operating framework, common understanding are, quote, inadequate. What do you make of this report? Well, uh, first, uh, to Aaron's point about it really pointing back to the Liberals, 
Uh, this is a government that's been in the driver's seat for seven years, and all uh, mismanagement of this nature uh, is the government's mismanagement, and they have to start, first of all, by owning this. There's no excuse seven years on uh, to be pointing, uh, to have these fundamental mistakes and to be pointing back at the Liberal government for what they did. Now, clearly, uh, getting engaged in a developmental project like the Liberals did is a mistake, but this government hasn't learned that lesson either. Witness the F-35 another developmental project that this government threw itself into uh, wholeheartedly. Uh, I think secondly, uh, Evan, is the issue that this government has contributed to this problem. In 2008, they threw another $120 million at this project, obviously exacerbating the original problem of getting engaged in a developmental uh, project. Now, the quotes you've given are about uh, governance and structure and so on and so forth, but what I think is most interesting about what I've seen of this report so far, and it was hinted by communications coming out of Sikorsky uh, even last year, and that is that this government hasn't even, at this point in time, almost 10 years into this project, defined the capabilities that they require from this uh, helicopter. So they're still talking about relevant operational capabilities. Uh, they're still talking about more or less uh, important operational requirements. So what the report really provides is, is uh, an, an astounding indictment of mismanagement here in that well, so many years into this project, we have a government that hasn't even been able to settle on the relevant operational capabilities of the helicopter that they want to buy. Uh, jo Joyce Murray, I want your take on this. The, government, in, the government's report in the summary of recommendations, and, I, and I, I show it to our audience right here if you can see that, it says the government should recognize that there will be required to sacrifice less important military helicopter requirements to deliver the relative capability to the uh, Air Force. What, what's your take on this document? Well, one, another way of saying that is that, uh, is that the projected costs of this project are more than double uh, what they were intended to be. So uh, the kind of failure of leadership that we're seeing by the Conservative government uh, means more delays and higher costs for equipment. Uh, that is replacing helicopters that are now over 50 years old. And uh, we do need to be concerned about uh, safety of, of military personnel. What, what I wanted to comment, Evan, is that from when I um, uh, heard a summary of this report, essentially it's saying this project is off the rails, uh, that it has been completely botched at, by the Conservatives. Because I do want to point out that even though, even though the uh, helicopter replacement plan was cancelled 20 years ago, it was the Liberals almost 10 years ago that did a procurement process that the Auditor General said in a report was a sound process. And Ms. Murray, Ms. Murray is bringing up some critical dates. She said 20 years ago the program was cancelled. That was Prime Minister Kretchen in his first there's no, act there's of no Prime question. Minister. There's 10 no years question later her sides. colleague Scott Bryson announce this program. So if the report, which I said I haven't seen, says there's problems at the outset, Ms. Murray should ask Mr. Bryson uh, what, what helicopter he thought he was buying 10 years ago. Was it a developmental aircraft? Was it off the shelf? This is certainly something that the Liberals wear right from the EH-101 cancellation right through to the purchase of this. We're committed to working and getting the aircraft that Sikorsky did, okay, committed so, uh, to. So yeah. I, I, let me just get Joy, Joyce Murray to respond. Yeah. Uh, clearly, and I spoke to the man, Alan Williams, who actually signed the um, original memorandum of understanding on, on this deal. He said that at some point, in his view, Sikorsky couldn't fulfill the obligations as they thought, and there should have been a re-procurement process under the Liberals. Well, uh, Evan, <laughs> what, what, uh, what the Liberals did is they put forward a full procurement process that was signed off by the Auditor General, as I've said. The Conservatives then cancelled that, so I was, I was quite mystified by hearing Evan say, we don't want to move too fast on this. Uh, the uh, report is also pointing it that there's a, a breakdown in this government's approach to uh, its leadership on procurement, and we've seen this not just in the helicopters, we've seen it in 
virtually all military pr procurement from the uh, F-35s to the Arctic icebreakers to trucks to uh, ships, supply ships. Uh, so there, so is, there is a fundamental problem and that's what they should be focusing on, not blaming the companies and not blaming governments of decades ago. So, so let me, Mr. Tua, first of all, we've obtained this report. It said there's 45 to 90 days to make the changes in order that, and they say in the report you can still get this aircraft within the time frame 2013 and it will be unsurpassed in the world today in terms of capability. This report, you say you haven't seen it. We've talked to Public Works. They couldn't tell us where it's been. Has the government made any changes according to the recommendations of their own audit, which taxpayers have paid for, to make sure that this process will change to get these things up in the air? What can you tell us has been done? I think the government has been consistent in our approach that we want to make sure that Sikorsky lives up to their contractual requirements. And those are on the statement of requirements. So what Sorry, can the, the aircraft consistency do? Consistency has so far been indicted. There's been an indictment on the consistency. And is, it, is, it, is the definition of insanity to keep doing the same thing and expect a different result? The, the, the report here is saying do something different. Change your process. Is the government changing the process? Without seeing the report, when it says change your process, if you wanted to buy uh, an off-the-shelf uh, helicopter that's used for air ambulance or something simple like that, that's an easy procurement. Canada needs an aircraft that flies off the back of naval ships, has range, has capability, so we can't step away from our operational needs. We can't tell the Navy to why, rush something why, out. Why commission this report if you're not going to follow its recommendations? We've got to constantly be able to assess where this is headed. We have a contract now that says Sikorsky will deliver an aircraft with these requirements. They're already late. We've been pushing them with contractual delays. But at, in the future, we will have to make an assessment on what are the best needs for the Canadian Forces. I know, but can, I'm sorry, can they I, meet I, with these all due needs? respect, though, if your own report is saying that the, the, you've commissioned someone to make that assessment, the assessment is that the problem lies in the government's process to get this thing done. Will the government listen to that assessment? You said the process from the outset, Evan. I've said that that outset is when Scott Bryson announced this contract that we're trying to make sure Sikorsky lives up to. And Ms. Murray was quite mistaken in many of her facts. The Conservatives haven't cancelled things. If you actually want to go back to 93, Evan, in fact, it goes further. Pierre Trudeau was the first government to look at seeking replacement. <laughs> I, I agree. That was way, way back. I don't want to hear a history lesson. I want to find out what's happening to the over we, almost $5 billion. I we got, don't want to step give, away from what yeah. our Matthew men and women Kelly, I got, need. I got less than a minute. Matthew Kelly, last. I mean, I don't know when this thing's coming out. Uh, we've tried to get answers when this will be made public. We yeah. will post this on cbc.ca uh, so everyone can take a look at the part of the report we've got, Mr. Kelly. Yeah, and, and I think the key question you asked there, Evan, is why, why uh, pr ask for this report? Why commission a report in the first place? And if they needed to commission this report to find out what's going on, what a horrible indictment that is because they've had seven years, and if they don't know that they haven't even determined what the relevant operational capabilities of that helicopter are, then, then uh, they are uh, more in the woods on military procurement than I frankly even imagined. Mr. Calway, um, the statement requirements have no, been set and that's why it's being examined and why that is we not, haven't that accepted is not the what, Aaron, If you let together. me finish, Aaron, that is, not what the, that is not what the report says. The report is saying, the quotes that are being provided by CBC and Evan here are saying that, that you guys, the government, doesn't even know what the relevant operational capabilities are and that is the de fundamental determination that needs to be made. So 10 years into this okay. program, 7 years into a conservative government and they need an external consultant to tell them, hey guys, you better figure out what the relevant operational capabilities of this helicopter are or this isn't going to work. All right, they, they, they give them 45 to 90 days. I don't know if anything's changed because of this. Uh, last, Joyce Murray, uh, any last words? Well, thank you to uh, the courageous civil servants for actually shedding light on this <clears throat> and making sure that the report uh, becomes public, which was being held secret by the Conservative government. Uh, will this report uh, be made public? Can we find out? They say 45 to 90 days is recommended. Can you give us any update if the government will respond to this or um, it will be made public? Well, on my train ride home, I'm going to be logging on to cbc.ca and looking at the report myself. But I think it's clear that 
we are not stepping back from the requirements. Mr. Kelway is saying we don't know the requirements. Yes, we do, and we're holding Sikorsky to those. But are those. you making any That's changes the to the existing saying, process? Yeah. That's all. I mean, the, the report's recommending make changes to the process to help get these things in the air. You're saying no changes are being made. We've got to say, we've got to keep the capability of this aircraft up. If we step away from those requirements, which Mr. Kelway is suggesting, let's, let's right. accept an aircraft that does less. I'm not suggesting that. I'm suggesting, right. like the report okay. does, that you guys don't even know what they are. All right, I've got to leave it here. I'm going to put this report up on cbc.ca. We've also got an article about the cbc.ca. Kathleen Harris has written an article about uh, Power and Politics obtaining these documents. Check that out. Aaron O'Toole, welcome. First time on Power and Politics. Good Thank to you. have you here. Matthew Kelway, Joyce Murray, welcome back. Always good to have everyone on the program. Thank you. Thank you. We'll dis discuss more about that later with the power panel.